Okay, let's uh, take a look at what Visual Studio has created for us in the Solution Explorer. Um, you see it added a number of uh, folders and files in here for us. We have our um, unit test that we created, the unit test project. And um, here's our MVC application. And uh, there are three folders here that have signi specific significance for MVC. And that's the controllers folder, the models folder, and the views folder. Um, hence the model view controller, MVC framework. Uh, let's uh, talk a little about model view controller. Um, this is the software pattern um, for implementing user interfaces. It divides a given application up into three interconnected parts, model, view, and controller. Um, so let's uh, start with the user here. The user generates uh, or um, creates an action uh, usually by either entering a URL in the browser, clicking on uh, a hyperlink, a button, any kind of a gesture or an action uh, could cause a uh, request to be fired. So uh, what we're going to look, look at is a request coming to the controller from the user. The controller receives the request in the form of a URL. Um, and it's there's actually a routing engine that's going to pass that uh, map that URL to the controller. We'll go into that a little la later. But the controller receives a request and it's the controller's job to create the model. Um, in this case, um, the model uh, for what we're going to look at is the about page. Um, so the about page might have, um, say, the name of the company, it might have the address, phone number, that type of information, and that would be stored in the model. The controller will then select a view and uh, the, mo the data that comes from the model will be injected into the view and the view will then be returned to the user in the form of uh, HTML. And the view itself will be basically HTML. Um, let's see, and the view will, as I mentioned, will incorporate the model as, it's, as it sends it back. Um, so the end result here is that it, uh, MVC helps you isolate the work done by these three components, making it easier to modify each component without breaking the other components. Um, there's basically a lessening of dependencies across these three components here. So now let's actually take a look at how this works in our Hello World. Um, let's start, let's bring up the browser. Um, and we'll talk about how this request comes in. Okay, so we're going to specifically look at the about here. And you see we have um, this URL that's home and about. Now home will be our controller and about will point to a method within the controller which will call an action. So let's go ahead and um, go back here. Let's look at our controllers folder. Uh, so uh, ASP.NET MVC has a routing engine which will look at the incoming request, in our case uh, home about, and will pass that request on to the appropriate controller. In our case, uh, when we type in slash home slash about, um, we'll see that this particular request is routed to the home controller. And um, so you can see there's a naming convention going on here. It does a lot of the work for us. For instance, if you name your controller home controller, then ASP will look inside the controller folder for a controller named home controller and map those requests to that particular controller. Now this is an example. Um, it's often called convention over configuration, also known as coding by convention. And it's a software design paradigm which seeks to decrease the number of decisions that developers need to make, um, therefore making things simpler, and, but at the same time not losing flexibility because you can go in and define those different uh, differences if you want, if you want to do things in a different way. But if you, if you can accept the default way of doing things, it just makes things a lot easier, less work to be done. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, the code within our home controller. Um, any public um, method within a controller uh, will be called and an, will be an action and will be um, able to be mapped to from a, uh, uh, a request from a browser. So let's take a look at this. We've got index, about, and contact. Um, okay. 
Now let's look at about. That's where we're going to focus our attention on here. Now um, the about action isn't technically building a model here. It's just returning a string that's passed to the view uh, in this dynamic view bag object. Um, it's a, which is an easy way to pass data into the view. It's not the best way because uh, since view bag is a dynamically typed object, uh, we don't get type checking here. We can essentially just add anything we want here. Uh, inside this view bag, we can create any object by adding a property to view bag and it'll be available within our view. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead um, and I'll set a breakpoint here. And we'll go ahead and run, and you'll see when we get to the about um, action, it'll break into our controller here. So we're going to go ahead and click on about, and boom, we're in here. And we'll go ahead and hit F10, and we're inside. So one of the first things you'll notice is that this um, method is going to return an action result. Um, well, let's see. There are basically um, there there. Are, a number of different uh, things that can be returned from an action. Uh, we could redirect the user, we could return JSON, or in this case we're going to return HTML in the form of a view. And you see we're adding to the view bag this string here which will get shown in the page. Um, what else? Let's stop now and I want to go ahead and um, I'm gonna clear this breakpoint. Continue. Okay, and we we got our um, about page to display. So let's go ahead and close this out. And um, now I'd like to talk about views. Let's see. Let's go into the views. So you see some more conventions here. In the views folder we have uh, for each controller, account and home, we have a separate folder. So you see we have the home controller. If we open up home We've got three different views, each one corresponding to uh, the actions that were in our controller. And uh, by naming these in this way, MVC knows exactly where to, to route um, everything and to find the view. So we're going to go in and look at About. And you'll see that one of the first things you'll notice is that um, there isn't a whole lot of uh, HTML in here. And the reason is that uh, parts of the page that are um, seen on many different pages, um, for instance the top header and the nav menus and say the footer um, are in what we call a master layout and um, that provides those elements that are shared across many pages. So here we're just focusing on the uh, bit of the view that uh, the about uh, action is going to provide. And uh, you'll notice in the view bag, uh, we remember we set the view bag um, message, and that's right here. So let's go ahead and um, go back to our controller. Let's just add an item in here. Um, let's call it location. And I'm just going to say San Francisco. Okay. And. Um, We'll save that. So I've just added that string to um, the view bag. Now let's save and go back to the view. I think we'll just get rid of what's here and we'll create a div. And we'll just say this is the special syntax that Razor uses. And now see, you notice the IntelliSense doesn't know. Um, the objects that might be in ViewBag, because it's a dynamic object that gets built on the fly, um, there's no way for it to really know what objects might be put in there. We know its location, so we're just going to go ahead and type that in. And we'll go ahead and run here. Okay. We're going to click on About, and you see we've got San Francisco, California in the page. Okay, so now let's uh, talk a little about testing. Um, as you recall, when we created our project, we created a test project, and uh, Visual Studio has set this up for us. We'll go ahead and close this project. So Visual Studio set this uh, unit test project up for us, and it went ahead and created a unit test uh, 
control, let's see, a unit test page here for um, a class, I'm sorry, uh, with test methods for each um, action that we had in our home controller. So we have an index, about, and we have a contract, I'm sorry, contact. So um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the about action, and all it's doing here, it's, it's relatively simple. Well, first of all, I'll talk about uh, unit tests. There, basically there are three parts to a unit test method. There's the arrange step, the act step, and the assert step. The arrange step, which we see here, um, basically is uh, the, the part of the unit test where we create our objects that we want to do the testing on. And here we're creating a home controller which um, we are going to run our test over. Uh, the second step is the act step. This is where we actually run the test on the code in question, and um, we're going to see be re we're going to be returning and coercing uh, the return to a view result. Um, and let's see, the final um, step is the assert step. This is where we uh, where um, you write an assertion which proves whether something worked or not. And in this particular case, all we're really looking at is whether a result was returned. And in other words, it didn't return null. Let's go ahead and change this. Um, since we did add in location, let's just go ahead and say um, r equal. Um, and we're going to put San Francisco, California. And then we're going to say um, result.viewbag, oops, dot uh, location. Okay, well, let's see. Let's go ahead and um, run this test and see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and up to the test menu, run. We'll run all tests. And you see they all pass. Um, so let's just uh, to show you that it can fail if it would fail if um, it didn't match the string. Well, we'll just add an X in there, and we'll rerun our tests, and you'll see that we uh, that this failed. They are not equal, and uh, we can see that the assert R equal failed. We can click here, and it'll take us directly to the line which um, where the fault occurred. Um, and if we get rid of that X and then rerun, oops, well, that, that worked. Okay, we just reran the about. So um, you get an idea of how you can do your, your unit tests. There's, of course, a lot more. I mean, we could do many, many screencasts on unit testing. But this just gives you a, a real quick overview of how to create an MVC application. And... Um, a look at uh, controllers, views, models, and actually we didn't go into model creation much. We can do that in a future screencast. Um, but uh, I think that's about it. Um, so let's see. In a follow-on screencast, we'll go into more. Um, go in in more. Um, we'll go more in depth into uh, MVC. Um, and we'll cover additional uh, MVC features. Um, the first one we'll tackle in um, ASP.NET here will be to deploy this MVC Hello application to a Windows Azure cloud. That'll be the next uh, item in the series that we'll do. So I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Uh, bye for now. Thanks.